Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at solving equations with sec, cosec and cot in them so we can answer questions from exercise 6c. So this is very similar to the topic that we saw in year 12 where we were solving trig equations, maybe rearranging trig identities as well. Um, but in this case here we've got three more trig functions that we need to rearrange. But my advice would always be with sec, cosec and cot, just change them using their identities into terms of sine and cos, and then effectively you're only rearranging two trig functions. So rearranging this thing here, uh, remember that we worked out a way to represent cot in terms of cos and sine, and sec here is obviously 1 over cos. So multiplying all of these terms together when they are written in sine and cos form, and we can see here that when we were to multiply these three terms together, all of this stuff uh, factors down, so we've just got one left over. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Um, in this case here, we have sine cos multiplied by sec plus cosec. So the first thing I would do here is turn sec and cosec into sine and cos mode. Um, we can add these fractions together now by creating common denominators. So the 1 over cos will need a sine on the bottom, so multiply sine on the top as well. And the right-hand fraction here will have cos, we need to have cos on the bottom, so multiply cos on the top as well. <clears throat> so in this case here we have sine cos multiplied by this big expression here. It looks more complicated, but that's actually going to help us simplify later on. You can see here the sine and the cos will cancel out with the sine and the cos down here. So this will actually end up simplifying to sine of x plus, sorry, sine theta plus cos theta. Okay, now is a, an opportunity for us to show uh, this identity here. So we're looking to prove that uh, the left-hand side here is equal to the right-hand side, and we'll need a little bit more space for this. So start with LHS, or left-hand side. Uh, always start with a more difficult side, um, and then we can simplify this to an easier version of it. Um, <clears throat> looking at the numerator here, we have cos theta and cosec theta. Um, we can rewrite both of these as cos theta over sine theta times 1 over sine theta. So in this case here, it's going to be cos theta divided by sine squared theta. Looking at the denominator now, sine squared plus cosec squared, what can we do with this? We can rewrite both of them as 1 over cos squared plus 1 over sine squared, and group these together, and if we were to group these together, the sine squared plus the cos squared will end up equaling 1, so it's going to be 1 over cos squared uh, theta plus sine, so times sine squared theta. So now what we're going to have is numerator divided by denominator. And remember that when you divide fractions one by the other, you're going to kiss and flip. Okay, so it's going to be the numerator times by the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, so we've flipped this fraction on the right-hand side here, but we're now going to multiply. That is how you divide fractions. You times but flip the second one. And then we can see here that a bunch of this stuff here will cancel out. So the sine squared will cancel out with the sine squared, and we just end up with cos cubed theta. There we are. That's the answer to this question here then. So um, if it were me, I wouldn't have split it up like they have here, but it is a good way of showing that um, when you've ever got a fraction, you can always simplify the top separately, the bottom separately, and then if you end up with a four-tiered fraction like this, remember it's just the top divided by the bottom, and then to divide fractions one by another, keep the first fraction the same, times and flip the second fraction. All right, then let's get on to solving some trig equations. Now we've got sec theta here equals minus 2.5 in the range 0 to 360. The first thing I would do is rewrite sec as 1 over cos. And now we're going to rearrange a little bit. So I'm going to times both sides by cos and divide by minus 2.5. Work out what this fraction is, and you get cos theta equals minus 0 0.4. So now I've got a basic lower sixth uh, AS level um, trig equation I need to solve here. 
So inverse cos the minus 0.4. So in this case here, we're going to get 113.6. And then using the cos graph to work out the second solution, 113.6 is going to be here. So we need the other solution that's here. So it's going to be 360 minus 113.6, which is 246.4. Okay, let's have a go at another one then. This one here is cot 2 theta um, equals 0 0.6. Now in this case here, I would be tempted to turn this into a cos 2 theta over sine 2 theta, but I don't think that's really going to help us. I think 1 over tan 2 theta here is probably going to be better. But remember, whenever we've got a 2 theta inside our brackets, we need to double the ends of the ranges. So double 0, you get 0, double 360, and you get 720. So in this case here, let's uh, rearrange this. So we get tan 2 theta equals 1 over 0 0.6. 1 over 0 0.6 is, um, when we do tan minus 1 of it, gives us 59.04. So this is our value for 2 theta, or if you've substituted a different letter in, it's equal to that letter. But now let's find the other values of um, 2 theta in between 0 to 720. So the graph here, the half of the graph is going to look like this. And remember, it then just adds on 180 each time. So just keep on doing that until you get up to somewhere that's above 720. I think we can probably stop at this point here. And then here we can now, now that we've found all of our two theta angles, we now half all of these angles. So we've got 29.5, 120, 210, and 300, all rounded to three significant figures. Okay, a bit more of a tricky one here. Now, 3 cosec theta equals 2 sec theta. So first, rewrite both of these in terms of sine and cos. And what we're looking for here is sine over cos equals tan. So it's going to be a tan question, this one. Times both sides by sine. And um, I would divide by 2 at this point now. Uh, so we're going to get tan theta equals 1.5. So now we need to find the other solutions. Inverse tan of 1.5, we get 56.34. Add on 180 to get the second solution, 236.31. 236 and that's our answers. All right, then, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here. I've got one proof question. Start with LHS. Use a series of algebraic steps to get to RHS. And then I've got a trig solving equation one here as well. Pause the video and try these two out. Right, okay then, let's have a go at this question here then. So pick the more difficult side to start rearranging because it's generally easier to do it that way. So in this case here, we're going to select the left-hand side. I'm going to write out the left-hand side so that we're clearly showing all of our steps and all of our work. In this case, we're getting no marks for the answer. We know the answer is sec theta. It's given to us. So all of the marks here are going to be picked up through showing clear um, algebraic manipulation from one line to the next. So the first thing I'm going to do here is it's much easier to just rearrange sines and cos's. So in this case here, I'm going to rearrange tan into sine over cos. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply this fraction together here on the right hand side. So in this case, treat the sine theta as sine over 1 if you're confused as to how to multiply fractions. Top times top, bottom times bottom. So sine squared theta over cos. And for the left-hand expression here, cos, well, I'd quite like to add it onto this fraction here. So it's going to need cos on the bottom because denominators need to be equal when adding fractions. And then I'm going to have to times by cos on the top as well. So treating this as cos over 1 and timesing the top and bottom by cos, I get cos squared over cos. Next thing I can do is I can add these fractions together here. So sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 over cos theta, <clears throat> and I know that 1 over cos theta is sec theta, so my answer here is sec theta. 
And the next thing I'll write is equals RHS with a little box down below just to say that I've proved it. For the next question here, we have um, sec theta equals minus three. Just before I move on to the second question here, this the first question is not a standard um, is not a standard identity rearranging. It's on the easier end of the scale of rearranging trig identities. There's another video coming up that's going to look into more detail of rearranging trig identities. So before you think that they're all going to be this easy, they're not. Um, and have a look at the next video to check out how to do some harder variety of rearranging trig identities. <clears throat> but in this case here, we're going to start on the second question. It's going to start with 1 over cos theta equals minus 3. And I'm going to do a bit of cross multiplying. So I get 1 over minus 3 or minus 1 over 3 equals cos theta. And now it's suddenly a, um, a first year lower sixth trig um, type question. So in this case here I've got minus a third so that's where my marker is going to go and I'm probably going to get two answers that are slightly bigger than 90 degrees. So in this case here cos minus one of minus a third is going to equal, get your calculator out, um, cos minus one of a third and it's in degrees mode so make sure your calculator is in degrees mode Mine wasn't, that's why I'm taking a bit longer. Minus 1 divided by 3 is equal to 109.47. So we'll just write 109. And it's negative 109 as well because the cos graph is symmetric. And these are the two answers in between minus 180 and 180. When answering these questions, always check the range of your that they're looking for your answers to be in between. And that's how you know how far you need to draw your graph. Okay, right, so have a go at some of the other questions from exercise 6c. The, as I say, these were probably on the easier end of the scale of solving trig equations and proving trig identities. So do seek out the problem-solving questions in exercise 6c and the exam-style questions in 6c as well. Um, and persevere through the difficult ones. This is not an easy topic. It is one of the harder topics in A-level maths. Practice, 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 practice. Um, and the more you practice the more you get a feel for what you have to do and it will come more naturally and more and more naturally the more you do. So practice does make perfect in this case. Thanks very much for watching.